Hey, what's up everyone? In this new tutorial, we are going to implement a simple 2D shooting. As you can see, I can shoot using the F key. Also, we can kill the enemy. So if you didn't check out my previous videos, go ahead and check them out. We are making a 2D platformer game. In this video, we're gonna focus on the 2D shooting ability. And before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So this is what we left off from the previous videos. We've created this simple 2D character and we can move using the arrow keys. Also, we can make a simple jump and a double jump as well. If you didn't watch these videos, go ahead and check them out. But in this tutorial, we are going to focus on the shooting ability. We will be able to shoot using the F key. And to do that, we are going to download this character because it has the shooting animation. Basically, we are using the Game Art 2D website. So this website contains some free assets under the freebies. We have free characters. We've already used these two. And in this video, you need to download this girl because it contains all of the animations that we need as well as the shoot animation you just need to click on free download then extract the files and import it into unity and I've already done that once you create the character which is this one basically this is called a prefab which is a copy of the character but this character doesn't have the shooting ability and that's what we are going to implement First, we need to create the shoot animation and if you don't know how to create an animation, it's very easy. You only need to drag in the sprites. Here we have these three. We're going to drag these under the hierarchy and Unity will create the animation by default. I'm gonna put it under an animation folder. We've already created three players with their animations and this is the fourth character. And let's call our new animation shoot04. Then let's hit save. And that's going to add this object. We need to get rid of it. We only need the animation that is created under the player 04. And it's this one. Let's go ahead and get rid of the animator controller. Now we're gonna add this animation under the animator controller. We've created this one in the previous videos to control the different states of each player. By default, he's idle, we can run, jump, and so on. And to add the shoot ability, we need to drag in the animation under the animator window. And we need to create a transition. Basically, our player can shoot whenever he's idle, run, or jumping. That's why I'm gonna make a transition from any state to the shoot state or the shooting animation so these are called states and the animation is under this motion field we have shoot 04 anyway we need to transition from any of these states to the shoot state whenever we click on the F key and to control this transition we can add conditions if you go all the way down you see that we have this conditions section Basically, I'm going to create a parameter to control this transition using this plus icon. Let's add a boolean and let's call it shoot. Then we're going to select the transition and add the condition shoot. Then true. Whenever we set this boolean to true, our player will transition from any state to the shoot state. After that, we need to go back using make transition and I'm gonna make transition to the idle state and here you don't need to add a condition and that's because if you leave the has exit time checked our player will transition from shoot to idle once the animation is finished and that's what we want and it's highly recommended to reduce the transition duration when you are working on a 2d game so I'm gonna change it to zero the same thing for this one. Make sure to change it to zero as well. You could even grab the character 
to check for the transitions. So let's go ahead and drag the player 4, which is our player. Then if you hit play, you see how the transition is working. Now we're going to create a script that will actually make the player shooting whenever we click on a key like the F key. And to do that, I'm going to add a new script. Of course, you could change the player movement script and add the shooting functionality under it. But I'm going to create a separate script that is responsible for the shooting ability. Under the player folder, let's right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call it player shooting or player shoot. Then we need to attach it to the player. So we need to open up the prefab. Then you could simply drag in the script. And as you can see, it's attached to it. Now we're going to open this script and check if we have pressed the F key. In such case, we are going to change this parameter to true so that the player transitions from any state to the shooting state. And to do that, we need to adjust our player controls. So if you don't know, I'm using the new input system. So make sure to watch my video about the 2D movement with the new input system. Anyway, we've created this player controls. If you double click on it, you will have this window. And you've already added two actions, one to move the player and another one to jump. And the same thing, if we want to check if we have pressed a key to shoot, we need to add an action using this plus icon. Then we can give it a name like shoot. Then we need to set the binding, which is the trigger for the action. In order to shoot, we are going to use the F key on the keyboard. And to set that, we need to select this no binding. And under the properties tab, we can set the key. Of course, you could search for it like F key on the keyboard. Or you could listen and hit the F key. As you can see, it pops up. We can select it. Now we can open our script and check if we have pressed the F key using this shoot action. But before that, make sure that the interaction is set to press only. And that's because we want to shoot whenever we press the key, not release the key or press and release. So let's open it up. First, I'm going to delete the start and the update methods. And we need to create an instance of the player controls. Basically, whenever you create a player controls input asset using the new input system, Unity creates this player controls class. We need to create an instance out of it. And to do that, it's very easy. But first, make sure to save the asset. Each time you change the player controls, make sure to save it. Then let's go back to our script. And we need to add the type, which is player controls. And let's call it controls. Then I'm going to use the awake function, which is basically like the start function, but it's called just before. That's why we use it to set up some variables like the player controls. Basically, we need to initialize it using controls equals new player controls. And that's how we can create an instance of the player controls. After that, we need to enable it using controls dot enable now we can access the shoot action using controls dot land if you don't know what is land it is the action map which contains all of the actions like the shoot one then let's add dot shoot whenever this action is performed using dot performed we're going to call some kind of a function to play the shooting animation using plus equals. Then we add the ctx variable. So don't worry, we are not going to use it. Anyway, we add this arrow. Then the name of the function, which we haven't created yet, I'm going to call it fire. Then let's go under the awake function and create the fire function using void fire. And under these curly braces, we're going to access the animator controller so that we can switch to the shoot animation by changing the shoot boolean. If we change this parameter to true, our player will switch to the shoot state or the shooting animation.
but I think we will get a problem with the boolean if you change it to true our player always transitions to the shoot animation that's why I'm gonna use a trigger let's get rid of this one using delete then let's create a trigger I'm gonna call it shoot as well and instead of using the shoot boolean let's use the shoot trigger whenever we set this trigger our player will transition to the shoot animation but first of all we need to add a reference to the animator controller using public animator and let's call it animator as well we're gonna reference this animator from the inspector then we can access the trigger using animator dot set trigger make sure to pass in the right name which is shoot and that's pretty much it let's test the code and don't forget to reference the animator component which is this animator so let's drag it under this animator variable then let's hit play and there you go now if I hit the F key we can shoot but we didn't add the bullet yet we are going to instantiate a bullet then we're gonna apply physics to it to move forward and to do that, it's very easy. Let's add a simple 2D object using right click 2D object. And I'm gonna use a sprite like a capsule. Then let's call it bullet. I'm gonna reset the transform. Then let's change the order a layer to a bigger number like 5. We have our capsule. I'm gonna rotate it around the Z axis by 90 degrees. Now it looks like a bullet. Also, I will adjust the size. Let's change the scale to 0.2. And let's give it a dark color. And this is our bullet. We need to create a prefab out of it so that we can instantiate it. And to do that, we only need to drag the bullet under the prefabs folder. And we can get rid of this one because we have a copy of this bullet. Then let's open up our script again and let's add a reference to the bullet using public game object and let's call it bullet. Then we can instantiate it once we fire using the instantiate method. We give it the bullet object and the second parameter is the position of the object. We can create another variable using public transform and let's call it bullet hole we are going to create an empty game object in front of the player and it's gonna be the bullet hole where we are going to put the bullet then we can enter the position using bullet hole dot position and for the rotation I'm gonna use the bullet rotation using bullet dot transform dot rotation let's save our script then we need to open the player prefab and let's add the bullet hole using right click create empty and let's call it bullet hole as well then we can select the move tool and put it in front of the player then we need to reference it just drag in this object under the bullet hole and we need to reference our bullet and let's hit play and there you go now we can instantiate these bullets we only need to add a force to it but to apply a force to an object we need to add a rigid body component to it so let's open up the bullet prefab and let's add few components like a collider so later on we can check if we have hit the enemy we need to add this kind of collider I'm gonna use a capsule collider because we have a capsule then let's add the rigid body component and here you could adjust some parameters for example let's freeze the rotation around the z-axis as well as the y position we only need to move this bullet along the x-axis and I think I'm gonna check the is trigger option because we don't want this bullet to collide with our objects 
we need to pass through it then let's go back to the script and luckily the instantiate function returns the bullet object we can reference it using game object and let's call it go equals the bullet after that we can access the rigid body component using game object dot get component then let's pass in the rigid body component and we can add a force to it using dot add force this takes a vector to which is the force so we need to push our bullet to the right side if the player is facing right otherwise we are going to push it to the left side using vector 2.left and to do that we need to know if our player is facing right or left and we've already added this parameter under the player movement as you can see we have this boolean is facing right make sure it is set to public so that we can access it from this script and let's cut this line of code and add an if statement then we need to access the player movement script that contains the boolean using get component player movement then we can add dot is facing right in such case we are going to push the bullet to the right side using vector2 dot right and let's multiply it by a force like 200 you could also create a variable for it let's add public float and let's call it force equals 200 then let's use our variable instead but otherwise that means that the player is facing the left direction we're gonna push the bullet to the left side by changing this vector 2.right to vector 2.left and that's pretty much it let's save our script again and let's hit play now we can move and also we can shoot using the F key but we can't kill the enemy and that's very easy we can use the on trigger enter 2d function which is called whenever our bullet passes through any kind of object in the scene in such case we are going to check if it's the enemy we're gonna destroy it so let's go back to our player folder and let's right click create C sharp script I'm gonna call it bullet then let's open our bullet prefab and attach the script and let's open it up in Visual Studio first I'm gonna get rid of these methods and let's use void on trigger enter 2d this takes a collider 2d variable let's call it collision then we can check if it's the enemy using if collision dot tag the enemy tag in such case we're gonna destroy it using destroy collision dot game object also we need to destroy the bullet as well so make sure to add these curly braces because we have more than one line of code using destroy game object and that will destroy the bullet game object let's save the script also make sure that our enemy has the enemy tag now let's play the game and there you go we've added a simple shooting system so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the bell icon and i will see you in the next one